today we're going to install governor springs in a p7100 pump this is a p pump for your 12 valve cummins for those guys that speak slang or diesel lingo there are a lot of options for governor springs when you start searching for your p pumped cummins or your p7100 pump let me tell you why the power driven governor springs are the right choice for you first off our governor springs have a custom machine spring base. Some of the other competitors' bases are too tall. They cause erratic idle and weird running conditions. We've mimicked the factory Bosch bases to give your pump the correct characteristics in the governor setup. So follow along in this video as I explain how the governor works and why our springs work better and why I recommend 4K governor springs for every P-pumped 12-valve Cummins engine out there. Okay, let's first start off learning about governor springs. The governor springs are located under this sheet metal cover cap on the pump. Inside the pump is a set of governor weights like this. As you can see, they move out. These weights, as it gets higher RPM, these weights move out. And this little pendulum effect essentially pulls the throttle back internally or pulls the rack back on the pump. So what we're trying to counteract is these weights moving down. The factory springs are fairly light and allow these to move in the geometry that Bosch designed. What we did is we mimicked the factory seat base in our performance springs and we have more true or square ground springs so that they act just like the premium Bosch ones. There are a lot of Chinese imported governor springs that kind of work, but to be honest with you, they suck. The truck doesn't idle well. It doesn't have smooth governing characteristics throttle becomes touchy at times it's really weird so what happens is when these get installed the factory governor springs get removed this base goes down and essentially it counteracts the movement of this weight and lets it govern at a higher rpm which essentially lets the pump fuel to higher rpm factory pumps defuel around 24 2500 is when they start pulling fuel back and usually around 3000 rpm they're done with springs like this they'll fuel hard to depending on how you set them up 3500 to 4000 rpm and usually they're all done by 4000 to 4200 rpm depending on how they're set up so let's get to work let's first talk about a couple tools you need to get this job done factory pumps have a wire now this pumps are modified there's a safety wire here so the first tool you're going to need is some side cutters or dikes if you prefer to call them that to cut the wire right here so you can get at this plug the other thing is this is the shutdown linkage here. Notice how it pushes the throttle back when it goes down? That's how the pump shuts down. There's normally a solenoid here. It's already off so that you can see better in this picture. We need to remove this. So we need an eight millimeter socket. I like a quarter inch drive because it's compact. So we've got to remove this shutdown linkage here. It's just standard righty tighty lefty loosey. Once we get this removed, you can take a flat screwdriver and pry it a little bit there, or sometimes they come right off. This is where you need to be careful. A lot of guys make a mistake. When you pull this off, there is a keyway on top. Some people call it the half moon key because it looks like half of a moon. It indexes in this slot here. If you lose this little keyway, it's metric. So one, it's hard to find at your local hardware store. And two, it makes it so that the shutdown solenoid no longer controls the shaft. Your truck won't shut down right, and sometimes it doesn't open up the throttle all the way right, so it limits your power. So don't lose this little keyway. So that's the whole big thing you got to be careful with. We'll set these to the side. Now that we have access to this, we can take a 7 8 six-point socket. Now this is metric, but a lot of guys don't have 21, 22, 23 millimeter sockets. But a lot of guys have standard 7 8 six-point sockets. These fit just fine on here. You don't want a 12 point because it's actually metric, but seven eighths works great. Standard righty tighty lefty loosey. We're gonna open this up. Okay, once you're inside, there's no governor springs visible. This thing rotates, so right now, I'm seeing this part of a weight right now, so it's not lined up. You need to line it up so that you can work where this stud is pointing outward. So we're gonna rotate the pump. 
on the truck, you would usually use a barring tool or get a big screwdriver down there on the flex plate and turn it. Or if you don't, a barring tool works great. Since this is off the truck, I'm gonna turn the pump by the pump shaft. This one's slightly different because this pump has been built for customers, so I gotta unpin the pump, which means I need a one inch real quick. So normally you wouldn't have to unpin the pump. This one's been pinned because it's been built so it's ready for a customer to install it. I pulled the timing pin out. Now, if you're on your truck, the pump is tipped sideways, so oil will come out. Usually you want a little catch thing right here if you're doing the pin. If you're not setting your timing, you don't need to mess with the timing pin. Normally, the steel pin is in, so it doesn't hurt anything. On this one, the plastic end was in, and I don't want to break this clip any more than it was already broken. So to turn the pump, I have a factory nut. This is just a little setup. You're not going to use this. Like I said, you're going to use a barring tool to turn your pump. Go to the governor's spring lineup. Then if you take your power-driven diesel governor spring tool, it's pretty simple. This is just a little nut that's got two slots in here. We're going to put this in here. We're going to just back this off. I like to count the clicks when you're pulling it out. Usually there's about four hard clicks. Every 90 degrees is a click. It's got four cam bumps on it. So right there, it clicked once, twice, three times. Then after that, it's loose. It's not even doing anything. You don't want to drop anything in the governor housing. If you do, that's how this governor got damaged. Somebody dropped something in there and started the truck, and this hit something and bent the stud. And then the tr truck would no longer govern or start or do anything. This could cause a runaway condition, so you don't want to do that. So when you get stuff close, it's good to have a little pen magnet. Um, you can get those like Harbor Freight. This is kind of like a super duper whiz bang one, but it's the same thing. And I use a magnet to, to twirl this nut off so I don't drop it. If you put them all in order, it's really easy to not screw it up. You can pull this outside cap off, and then you're going to pull all the springs out. These little shims, you don't want to drop this stuff in here. This gets in the pump, ruins your pump. Some guys will actually put a pen magnet right here and pull this out with a pick so that they don't have the opportunity to lose anything. I want to pull this outer spring out. This is the idle spring. Careful, sometimes oil will stick on the back and there'll be a big shim here. So I don't want that. Then in the middle, there's, a, there's more of a base. There's more guts in the center. See this piece that pulled off here? You don't want to leave that in there. This is really common. Guys will leave this in here and they go to put their new governor springs in, it sits up on the base and it doesn't idle or start or anything right. So you fish around with the magnet, get down clear in the bottom. There is a big wear shim in the bottom on a stock and this big thing, this, shim, this shims out the idle spring. If you take this out, your truck will not idle as strong, so don't do that. So you wanna put this back in. But by fishing this out, you know you've got everything out. If you don't fish this out, there's a chance you could have left this centerpiece in here. This centerpiece cannot stay in there if you get this out. So I recommend guys pull all this all the way out so that you know that this big wear shim and this goes in the bottom. Now remember, this stuff goes in the bottom of this little bucket here. See how there's a bucket and this is all contained here? Nothing can fall out. All this goes down in there. We can put the big idle spring back in. We reuse this. 
Now for the governor springs. There's two sets because there's two sets of governor springs. You're going to drop this whole stack in with this big machine end down. And inside here, there are three springs. This is how you get your 4,000 RPM. These are precision ground flat springs so that they fit and glide nice. That's why these springs are better than a lot of the competitors. We have good quality springs and these bases are machined properly to give you the right amount of preload on the idle spring so that the pump will actually idle strong. Otherwise your truck will stall and you put in gear. Then this cap can go right back on. Use your power driven tool. Now I recommend you go in until it starts clicking. Listen. One, two, three, four. I like to go in a bunch to seat everything. And then I like to back it out so there's no tension. And I like to go until there's like an initial. You'll feel like initial little grab right there. It just barely bumped down. I call that a soft click. And I like to do one, one click. That'll give you a really strong idle but it'll govern out a little earlier. If you give a little bit more preload like that, it'll go clear to 4,000. So it kind of depends on what you want to do. This customer would rather have a little bit more, less touchy of a throttle. He doesn't need 4,000 RPM. So this one's just getting one mild click and one medium click in there. You can also measure the protrusion on the stud. That's a really common thing. If you want to double check and get your calipers there, somewhere around 50 thousandths protrusion is pretty normal, 50 to 60. Pretty, pretty basic stuff here though. See it, talking an initial click, one firm click, two firm clicks, it's great. Or one firm click, it's kind of how I want to set this one. Now we got to turn the engine to get to the next set of springs. In my case, I'm turning the pump by the shaft because this is not on an engine. Now keep in mind the pump rotates at half speed of the engine. So you're going to have to turn the engine around one full revolution will give you half a revolution of the pump. It's kind of hard to reach your hand in there. That's why a lot of guys use a magnet when they're pulling these little screws and stuff out. Remember, don't forget that little base. It's got shims on it. Don't want to forget any of that stuff. You want to get that all out. And as a double check, I'm pulling this outer wear sleeve out and the idle shim. All this is out. Now I'm putting this wear sleeve back in. The little idle shim goes on top. That's just my double check to make sure I got everything out of there. Okay, so we're on the second side. Remember to put the big wear shim and the idle shim back in. Big wear shim goes first, then the idle shim. And if you can't remember which shim's which, if this spring holds it down, it goes back in because we're using the spring. So anything under this big spring stays in. But I had you take this out, remember, so that you don't accidentally leave this little spacer base in there. If you leave this spacer base in there and you put the new spring stack on it, it'll kind of halfway fit and it'll screw everything up. Your truck will not run or start well and could run away. You could hit this on the housing and I mean, there's all kinds of problems. Don't leave that in there. So once again, wear shim, idle spring, back in. Big idle springs going back in. The new power driven 4K governor springs. Nice machine base, it's the right height. Nice square cut springs, like I said, quality parts. Goes in the pump here. This factory retainer goes back on the top. And this nut goes in. There are four bumps on here. These are the cam bumps. There's bumps on this retainer. That's why it clicks when it goes in, when it starts getting tight. Just gonna put this in real quick. Like I said, I go over tight at first to make sure everything's all seated. Clicks a couple times, okay. Hear those clicks? Listen, see, that's a hard click. 
So we're going in, kind of have an initial. That's the first, initial, first, two. This guy wanted it set. This is how you get a really strong idle. And like I said, this is under tension when the truck's spinning, so these aren't going to back off and fall off. You can also measure protrusion. Once again, this is about 50, 60 thousandths protrusion. If you want it to idle very close to stock, set this protrusion the same as you had before, and it's going to be as close to stock idle as you can. If you go too tight, your idle will raise a little bit. If you go too low, too little tension, your idle will drop a little bit. Not a big deal though. I'd prefer the idle drops because you get a stronger idle. Then what you do, this is your idle set screw right here. It's just a simple 10 millimeter jam nut and you thread this nut up. And that raises the idle. The idle basically goes down and that's where the idle stops. That's the lowest as the idle will go. So it's really easy to raise or lower the idle. But if you get the tension tight, it'll raise the idle and you're gonna to have to lower that down to go back, which to me is wrong. I'd rather have less tension on here so you get a stronger idle, um, everything's better. The only time I really want these tight is if I'm trying to get maximum RPM or if I'm trying to build a really touchy throttle truck for a race truck or something. I don't know why you'd want a really touchy throttle, but really you just get a little more RPM capacity out of there. But honestly, I'd rather run looser 5K governor springs if I wanted more RPM rather than tight 4Ks. Maybe if you're going to the county fair and you need just a little extra RPM for the next pole, maybe you can add a couple clicks here, but that's pretty much it. This cap goes right back on. There is a little metal O-ring here, a little uh, metal seal like this. It stays on there generally. Sometimes it sticks to the cap. You just wanna make sure that's there. Screw this back on and send her home. It's sheet metal, so it doesn't have to torque really tight. I'd say around five foot pounds, seven foot pounds, eight, it's fine. Doesn't need to go crazy. There you go, governor springs are in. And then to make this ready for the customer, I've got to set the pin timing back in there. So I'm gonna turn the pump until the timing pins in the window there. Not important for this unless you're working on your pump on the bench. In closing, it's not that hard to install governor springs in your pump, especially when it's on the bench. The biggest difficulty on the truck is the fact that it's tilted down a little bit at an angle and you can't, you don't have a quite clear view and it's a little bit harder to get your hands in there unless you remove some stuff to work. But with a little bit of a mirror um, or a little bit of patience, it can be done on the truck. We've done it hundreds of times. The two key things that will make this job easy for you is one, getting good governor springs that set up well, that don't have to be adjusted and tweaked a bunch of time. Because the last thing you want to do is get in the pump again and again and again, tightening or loosening the governor springs and messing with the idle, trying to make your truck run right. The second thing, this governor spring tool. It's awesome. It fits. It fits positively on that and it lets you very easily with your fingertips feel those clicks. So you can go by the click method. Or if you want to reach veneer calipers down in there and measure, you can hit that stud protrusion as well. But I prefer the click method, it's worked the best for me. A lot of pump shops and guys when they're building professionally, they like to measure, because they like to have a measurement um, to each their own, whatever, whatever works for, well for you. But keep in mind, quality governor springs with American made components, American made springs that aren't gonna break, that are square cut ground, American made bases that are machined on CNC equipment, those couple things that we do on this makes this a whole lot easier. Thanks.